Hi guys, my name is Gina Jemsko and welcome back to episode Mean Girls Senior Year. We are on episode 11. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, here we go. It's a greenoid. Whilst Mika digested our auditions, the snow finally melted away. And in the meantime, I kept the ball rolling on Operation Outwit Regina. First stop, finding out where I stand on the waitlist. If Regina is ahead of me, then fighting this war could be pointless. Oh, Judy. She must be like the admissions person or something. Okay, Miss Jemsico, I have some good news. Did I get in? Not yet, but you are in the top 10th percentile. Oh, wait. Um, what? Oh, nothing. That was weird. Ask for your exact standing. Ask for Regina's standing. Oh, I think we should just ask for ours. Ask for our exact standing. Is there any way I can get my exact standing, like, non-percentile wise? We don't give out that information. I won't tell anyone if you don't. I suggest you focus on keeping your grades up and praying enough of the kids we did accept decide to go elsewhere. There has to be something I can do to find out exactly where I don't take bribes. Ooh. <laughs> what? I wasn't offering. Right. Best of luck, Miss Jamesica. Huh? Ring a ring. Remember, two years until retirement. <laughs> She's had enough. She's just had enough. This is Judy. Oh, it's a caller. Hi, I'm checking to see where I am on the wait list. Okay, last name, first name. Last last name, Jemsical. First name, Greenard. <gasps> you girls need to work this out between yourselves. Damn. <sighs> How bad is Regina phoning up doing that? After the Judy fiasco, I decided to summon my courage and straight up ask Regina about her waitlist position. So the next day, before Mika announced his cast, where is it? He hasn't posted it yet. But hey, I wanted to talk to you. About? I know you're on the waitlist and I know you know I am. And if one of us is obviously way ahead, then there's no reason for this. This? You, do, you doing the play, us grappling for control of every club. I don't know what you mean. <laughs> be blunt and ask, be brave and tell. Be brave. Fine, I'm in the top 10th percentile, okay? Okay, so where are you? It doesn't matter, I don't know if you're telling the truth. So your revelation changes nothing. She has a point, she does have a point to be fair. <laughs> oh. There's Damien. We haven't seen Damien for a while, actually. He's coming! He's coming! Who is? Mika, I assume? Yeah, Mika. Ahem. First, thank you all for auditioning for North Shore High School's spring theatrical production of my play, The Love Delusion. Oh, please. Gentlemen, while I truly appreciated your auditions, I came to the difficult conclusion that none were powerful enough to carry the male lead. The male lead. I thought it was going to be the female lead then. Carry the female, the male lead. As such, in addition to writing and directing, I myself will play the role of Caleb. Woo! What? Damien, of course I am happy to offer you the roles of bus driver, man number two, Friend, Fiend, and Man 3. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's great, Damien. Imagine all the costume changes. That's a good point, actually. Good call. I accept. Awesome. Now for the female lead. I hope we get it. The role of Cassandra was the most difficult decision of all, which is why I haven't made it. What? Why? Instead, throughout rehearsals, Greenoid and Regina will share the role, trading back and forth between lead and understudy until I'm confident which actress has both the most talent and truest passion for my play. Mmm, juicy! Karen's always there, just popping up at the end, isn't she? Throw a tantrum, support his idea. I kind of think that she should throw a tantrum, but I don't think it'll get her anywhere, so let's support his idea. Perfect. Perfect, really. Doesn't bother me, I welcome the challenge. Challenge? Ha! <laughs> if you even can even call it that. Feel free to quit now. Save it for the stage, ladies. Oh, Bernice, I don't think I've ever seen her before. What about me? Hmm. Damien, can you take on woman number two as well? Can I? Gr 
wait. Sorry, Bernice, we don't have any rolls left. Oh, poor Bernice. Hold on, there is that thunderstorm in Act 2. Can you hit a symbol? Yes. Done. Bernice will be our sound technician. Oh my goodness. Congratulations to you all. Rehearsal start Monday. So nobody got the part, for goodness sake. And my mum slams the van door literally two seconds before the lion. <laughs> oh, I don't think we're liking Katie's story. Are you gonna tell me what's wrong? Or do you want or do you want me to keep rambling about my childhood? <laughs> what do you mean? You've been lost in thought this whole time. What's up? Kinda lost my appetite. Oh, she looks really sad. Yale was one thing, but now Regina's after Mika too. She's like a black hole sucking up everything that matters to me. Three million dollars is a lot of money. I get it, but Yale is half my identity. I can't put a price on that. Anyway, there is no way Regina likes Mika, and there's no way he likes her, is there? It wouldn't be the first time Regina's used a guy for personal gain, believe me. It's so messed up how she's totally using him. Aren't you kind of using him too? Um, not really, because she we like him. No way. My motives are pure. But I'm sure you wouldn't mind if his dad just happens to make a call on your behalf. No, but I don't want Mika to think that's the only reason I'm doing it. Even if it kind of is, it's not. <laughs> Mika and I are friends. And honestly, when I'm on stage, all the Yale drama kind of melts away. I really kind of love doing this play. Hmm, well maybe you can pull ahead of Regina with the interview. Interview? Oh, sorry, I figured you knew. There's some college fair this weekend. I guess Regina scored a sit-down interview with a Yale alum. <laughs> How do you know about this and I don't? You really need to start watching Karen's channel. Hmm, maybe we do. I can't believe those words came out of my mouth. <laughs> no, neither can I. Oh, here we go. Is this her channel? The night, oh, the night before... He set everything up by email. It's just some alum. All I have to do is win him over. If you need any pointers, I do interviews all the time. Knowing their name is a good place to start. Regina, for instance. Great advice, Karen. His name is Parker Epps. He seems like a major toolbox. Oh, so it's not, um, I thought it was gonna be uh, Mika's dad. Now I, want to, now I want to look polished and professional. But still hot enough that he'd want to smash. Thanks, Katie. If Regina has an interview, I have to have one too. She really looks like wasn't I was confused then. I was like, well, that doesn't have like a good agenda in the back. Just gotta find that college fair and get in touch with that alum. They have one interview left spot left. Boom! Yale is my destiny. After the blood drive fiasco, this might be my last chance to one up Regina. I have got to find a way to inch ahead with this interview. I know I'm supposed to say, just be yourself, but honestly, I just web stalk the living bejesus out of him. I did. Parker has like zero online presence. The only thing I found was a Hello Cherub dating profile. Wait, what? Let me see. Oh my God. Yeah, so all I found out is that Parker Ebb is actually a woman which knocks out seduction as Regina's primary ga game bit. Game bit? Game bit. I don't know. But that's not enough. Do you not realise the gold mine you've happened upon? What do you mean? Greenoid, sweetie, the internet has just handed you the keys to Parker's heart. So seduction might be off the table for Regina, but not for you. You want me to make a fake profile to flirt with an admissions rep? That's brilliant messed up um i don't i um kind of messed up should we say should we say brilliant that's brilliant absolutely genius yes i am it's just like i told you after the blood drive regina's out there fighting for yale with a tank and you're frolicking around with a tin foil sword this is your ace in the hole look we'll just use photos of a stock model let's see find a cute one <laughs> of course i searched chin dimple <laughs> obviously he loves to cook plays tennis on the weekends might be a dentist what are you going to call yourself hmm what should we call ourselves oh dating profile username okay uh i'm gonna looking looking for love 
that's just looking for love. How about looking for love? Well, well, looking for love, it's time to bat your digital eyelashes and pump Parker for personal details. Hmm. Turns out, as looking for love, I was quite the charmer, and once Parker shared her whole profile, I had a treasure trove of interview ammo. Cat allergy? Check. Bleeding heart? Liberal? Big time. Obsessed with Ernest Hemingway? Insanely. Loves peacoats? Oh, what's that, Miss Epps? You'd like to meet looking for love in real life once you're back from your work trip. Set a date, ghost on her. Um, let's set a date. <laughs> I don't know. Would love that. Dinner next Tuesday? Oh my goodness. Who's looking for love? Um, he's a famous DJ. Oh, neat. Mums will believe anything. She seemed to buy that. What's up? I had a lightning bulb moment. It's gonna sound crazy, but hear me out, always. So, I'm right by the cafe where you're meeting Parker. You know how there's always a cop patrolling around there here? I do. Regina has to drive by him on her way to the interview. Go on. So what if someone calls to report a vehicle that coincidentally matches the description of Regina's? It's heading this way, driving erratically, swerving, swerve, swerving hither and thither. The caller suspects a DUI. <gasps> hmm. A field sobriety test would really throw Sir Regina off her game. At minimum, it'd make her super late. And if Regina blows this interview, she can kiss Yale goodbye. Do it for 35. We can't. I think that would be so mean to do anyway. I, we can't. We can't do that. Whatever, it was fun to think about. Good luck at your interview. Thanks, Janice. Now, back to the matter at hand. Okay, how are we gonna dress? Traditional, modern, inspired by Parker's profile. That's gonna be gems, yeah, 12 gems. So let's have a little look at traditional. Mmm, kinda of boring. Let's look at modern. Mm, no, I think we should go with traditional. Traditional ready to go. All right, it's game time. Unfortunately for Regina, Miss George, she still thought Parker Epps was a guy. <laughs> oh, she's gutted. Her scheme to flirt her way into Yale just got its plug pulled. Miss Epps, it's a pleasure to meet you. Likewise. So, Regina, tell me why you want to go to Yale. For as long as I can remember, my grandpa, a Yale alum himself, she's off on one, 20 minutes later. I love Yale so much, I even went as the mascot for Halloween. Go Bulldogs! Hmm, I wasn't aware Bulldogs wore fishnet stockings. I'm afraid our time is up. Oh, okay. So do you need anything else? Nope, I think I got all that I need to know. But without a worthwhile reason to want Yale, Regina was grasping at straws. Mm, she was a little bit greenoid. So you're stalking me now. Like Janice said, to stand a chance against Regina, I need to dirty up my fight. Let's not flatter ourselves. I'm he also here to interview. Oh, explains why you're dressed like a part-time receptionist. I bet your outfit made quite an impression on Ms. Epps. I made sure to do my research on Parker or P. Epps 79, as she's known online. For your information, my interview couldn't have gone better. That's great, because it'd be just terrible for Parker to see the episode of Karen Uncensored where you call him a major toolbox. She won't, I made Karen take it down. Well, as I'm sure you know, once something's been on the internet, it's hard to completely erase. So true, so true. I hope there's not a copy floating around somewhere. Are you saying you have a copy? Pretend that you do, or deny it. Let's pretend that we do. I just might. I doubt it. Okay, I don't need to prove it. Do I? You think it's been competitive so far? I've been room temp at most. You do not want to get me heated. I think she can probably play the bitchy game far better than us. Okay, here goes nothing. Hopefully this will go well. Did Looking for Love's research pay off? Majorly. 20 minutes into my interview, I had Parker Epps in my pocket. 
I guess just because it's because I'm more of a dog person. So am I. It's not that I have much choice in the matter. Allergies, hives, sneezing, the whole bit. Sorry, I keep going off topic, but you're a delight to chat with. You too. Back to it. Greenoid, who would you say you most admire? Oh, Ennis Hemingway or her mom. I'm gonna go, I feel like she should say mom, but she's gonna creep and say Hemingway. How so? Specifically Hemingway's portrayal of Santiago from The Old Man and the Sea. He never ever gives up in the face of adversity, no matter how hopeless things seem. It's a quality I strive to exhibit myself, good quality to have. For example, I had to transfer schools this year, which isn't easy as a senior, but I didn't let it stop me from pursuing my goals. I just had to work a little harder. Well, that's what Yale looks for in its students, tenacity. I don't know how, I don't know to what extent my input can impact your status, your weightless status, but, and I don't say this ever, I'll be relaying my very highest recommendation. Excellent. Yes, 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 yes. Finally, it felt like the clouds had parted and a ray of hope was shining through. Oh, things are finally going well for Green Eyed. But the thrill, oh, there we go. But the thrill was short lived. <laughs> Mika's play had turned into a total nightmare. I don't know why. It was as if the pizza therapy never happened, as if we'd never kissed. After two weeks of rehearsals, we were back to bickering like the first day of school. Oh no. But Cassandra. Love? It's nothing more than a parasitic dynamic between two people. Really, Mika? Really, Mika what? I get that you're expressing your point of view, but this passage is offensive, unrealistic. I don't know what that face was. Let's go with offensive. I would never say this. Well, I don't really care because your character would. Mika seems to be turned into a bit of a tool, doesn't he, to be honest? I kind of liked him in the beginning. It's the tone in general. You're being too harsh on love. What do you know about love? Um, I know enough, at least enough to know that this passage is whiny nonsense. Well, I know more than enough to be certain what I've written is neither whiny nor nonsense. So you say. Please, why don't you tell us all about the trials and tribulations of your last relationship? I don't have had to have had a boyfriend to know about love. And I don't have to value the input of someone who has only ever romanced her GPA. <gasps> He's so mean. Ouch. Ouch indeed. For what it's worth, Mika, I've been in lots of relationships. What you wrote, it's pure truth. Thank you, Regina. In fact, I'd like to see what you can do with this scene. Uh-oh. Take a breather, Greenoid. Fine. Feel free to take notes. This isn't going well. Not good at all. This is a long episode. I, thought, I keep thinking it's going to be finished. It keeps going on. He's writing, directing and starring in the play. I mean, come on, check your ego. This is high school, not Hollywood. You're just upset that he didn't outright pick you. I know. I really felt like things were going in a certain direction and then I got to the auditions and poof. Right back to friendland. I have no idea where things went wrong. If it makes you feel any better, I told Regina her dress is two sizes bigger than yours. <laughs> there are so many layers to what's going on. Are we talking about cake? There's the me liking Mika Leia, the Regina pretending to like Mika Leia, the me trying to get a rep from Mika's dad layer. <laughs> the Mika crushing your romantic hopes layer. That's the frosting. <laughs> I hate this cake. And just to frost the frosting, I can't let my mum know I'm here. If you need help sabotaging Regina's costume again, very funny, Damien. Cassandra, it takes a lot for me. It's not easy. To trust me? Oh, Caleb, you're so funny sometimes. Brilliant, Regina. Oh, she's going to get the pot. No, you're brilliant. This is not good. And now I have to stand here and watch them flirt. Hmm, 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 hmm. Damien, are you listening? Oh yes, why don't you tell him you like him? He's not interested, I already tried. I already tried, but I must not have made it clear enough. 
and if I tried again now it would totally come off like I'm only doing the play to win him over. Oh I'm confused. Don't don't you want to win him over? Well it's things just got so complicated, you know. What? Damien, suddenly you're a million miles away. Yeah, is it Janice? Please do not mention the J word in my presence. They're still not friends, oh my goodness. Ha, huh. I have a lot more on my mind than Mrs. Kevin G. What's going on? I am thinking about coming out. Oh, okay. Hmm, aren't you out? Not to my family. Oh, what do you think they'll say? I have no idea. I want to believe they'll be supportive, but they've made comments here and there that make me wonder. And they've thought Janice was my girlfriend this whole time. Oh, now I see. Exactly, the Janice situation puts so much more stress on everything. I'm sorry, if you want someone to talk to, or just to listen. Thanks, green -eyed. But Cassandra, love is nothing more than a parasitic dynamic between two people until one person bites a little harder and then... <gasps> the other is destroyed. Ouch. That is part of the script, but still hard to watch. I'm gonna be sick. Oh no. There we go, that's the end. A super, super long episode there, full of ups and downs and all sorts going on, but thank you so much for watching this video. Tune in soon for part 12, and I'll see you guys soon for a new video. Bye.